Hi, I'm a learning advisor here at James Cook University and I belong to an amazing support network for students, the Learning Centre. The Learning Centre is a one-stop shop to support you as you embark on this amazing, phenomenal thing called education and study. But more importantly, in this video today, I'm going to share with you seven steps to success. So we're going to start from the big picture to the finer detail and it's centred around one of the most important things that you will do at university and that's your assessment items. So in terms of what is required of students uh, at university is thinking strategically and purposely about what your long-term goals are. It may be to be a qualified teacher, doctor, nurse, it may actually be a stepping stone to something else you want to do. Now, once you've actually established and thought about your long-term goal, why you're actually here, you can start to break it down to medium-term goals and short-term goals. That's what you would do day in, day out to get and move closer towards that long-term goal. So with effort and work, you can get to where you want to be. So let's dive in here for a moment. That long-term goal might be completing your degree and a medium-term goal might be completing the four subjects that you have signed up for in semester one. And a short-term goal may be aiming for a credit, a distinction or a high distinction for those subjects that you have in semester one. All are interrelated and all of the short-term and medium-term goals will move you one step closer to your long-term goal. So, that short-term goal might entail putting together a weekly planner. And if you're not sure how to do that, you might look at the other videos in this series around planning your time towards success. The Learning Centre also has downloadable study planners, weekly study planners and semester long study planners that you can access and create your very own for success. So, short term uh, is a really uh, immediate important area to look at when you're looking at your goal setting and it might be weekly keeping up with the subject load so that's including the subject readings making sure you're ahead for the week that's coming now if you take charge of the short term medium term goals the long term goals will actually take care of themselves so i want you to think about what uh, is a crucial uh, long term goal for you and what you might need to do in the medium term and the short term to get there and so think about what you'll be actively doing uh, successful students are active in the learning process so what will you be actively doing weekly monthly each semester each year to move one step closer to your overall goal and I guess it's a wonderful opportunity right now to share with you uh, what success involves. So being successful actually involves thinking about that long-term goal and why you want to achieve it and also thinking about those medium-term and short-term steps to get there. Now, in terms of assessment planning, most certainly uh, the Learning Centre would encourage you, as would many students who have been successful in their degree, to create an assessment long study plan. Mark your calendar, put all of the due dates in, download those templates from the Learning Centre website. But in terms of putting together an assignment, it can be confronting and daunting your very first assignment or an assignment that you haven't done before. So I'm going to walk you through some of the crucial steps that you need to consider as you move through that assignment writing process or assessment process. Now in terms of assessment, a third of your time should actually be centred around unpacking the essay question or topic and researching, finding all the scholarly information and literature that supports and aligns to your question, thesis or position. Now, one third of the time should be centred around planning and drafting, making a map of what you'll include in the introduction, the body paragraphs, the conclusion, the layout of a presentation if that's what task has been set. And 
spending time in that phase to edit, rearrange paragraphs, refine, make your writing concise. And the other third of your time in the assessment timeline should be centred around editing your assessment. So many students leave it to the last minute because it's usually the result of sheer exhaustion and simply having enough by the time you get to the end of your assignment. They forget to edit, ask critical friends. You can always drop into the learning centre and seek some advice from a peer advisor. You can consult Studiosity 24 hours a day and you can submit your work to receive feedback from Studiosity. And you can also make an appointment with a learning advisor and invest time in attending things like PASS if your subject has access to that phenomenal program. So a third, a third, a third, a third unpacking and researching, a third planning and drafting, and a third editing your assignment to get it in at the best possible time and the best possible work that you can do. So, in terms of uh, meeting that deadline, successful students do a number of things through the assessment planning phase. The very first thing that they do is unpack or try to understand the assessment topic or question. And that is reading task descriptions, marking criteria, unpacking the marking criteria, and making links to subject specific learning outcomes. How does this task relate to the subject based learning outcomes in the subject outline? As well as defining key terms that are related to the topic and the assignment focus, and also thinking about the word limit set for the task. And then I guess it's really important that students embark on the research phase. Once you've understood what the task is asking and you have a really clear sense of the direction that you will take, it's time to dive into the databases and locate peer-reviewed scholarly articles and information to back up and support, justify and help you synthesise the topic or ideas that you're covering. Now, you will use research in your assignments nearly every single task to understand key terms, define them, locate examples uh, to substantiate your claims or your position on a topic. And after you've actually collated uh, some research from the databases, it could be from a book chapter, or it may be a website that your lecturer is asking you to explore or a government organisation, you need to create a bit of a map or a plan for your essay, uh, essay or assignment type. And that means laying out the structure. What type of writing is required? Is it a report, a critical essay, an annotated bibliography? Perhaps it is a specific report, a scientific report, a lab report. Maybe it's a presentation of some description or an academic poster. Now, regardless of the text type or the assignment type, if you have not covered or explored or had practice in one of those genres or areas before, it's really important to find out what uh, structure you are required to write in and to maybe locate some examples there. So you need to think about in the essay plan what will be the focus of the introduction, what will be the position and what will be the focus of the paragraphs to help reinforce and build an argument that backs up your position in each of those body paragraphs or sections of uh, the assessment task. Now, writing the first draft is the next step, and it's where you will include evidence and examples to support the claims you are making or the position that you have presented in the introduction. And all the way through the assessment planning process is critical reflection. Successful students reflect on what they're doing and uh, amend accordingly. So it's important to ask a critical friend to read through your draft using the criteria sheet. Use the criteria sheet yourself to have a look at where you can find evidence of that criterion in operation in your own paragraphs where you've responded to that criterion. As well as editing and redrafting, you will respond to feedback that you receive from your critical friends, perhaps a learning advisor, studiosity, or a peer advisor, or someone in one of your study groups. Make sure you respond to that feedback, make changes, and edit, proofread, read your work out aloud. That's how you will really find gaps in your structure and your writing. 
correct spelling, punctuation, grammar, and make sure if you're unsure of how to reference uh, or integrate sources, consult a librarian. They are experts in what they do and can help you with searching the databases to integrating evidence into your work uh, and also locating scholarly sources. So once you have done all of those things, uh, you will be submitting your work by the due date, running it through SafeAssign and also perhaps submitting a hard copy. In your subject outline, there are the rules and the requirements that are expected of you in each task. Make sure you go back to the subject outline and tick off every single thing that you have done and work through the formatting, the structure and uh, even reducing the word limit if you have too many words. So I hope that this particular uh, step, set of steps, the seven steps, has helped you think about what you will do as you go about starting your very first assignment at uh, university. Now, the r important things to remember is to backward map. Uh, use an assessment timeline. It's a really effective tool that will help you save time and stay on track. Use a timeline for each assessment to help you organise the semester. Don't forget those te te uh, planning templates, rather, that I have referred to in this video. And also think about how you will celebrate once you've hit that due date and you can really exhale and, 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 and have a little bit of re a relief for a few moments before you dive into the next task. So today it's all about uh, planning your assignment and thinking about the steps to success. Hopefully in this video you have come up with one, two or key three things that you will do uh, as a result of viewing this today. There may be three questions or concerns, one or two that you have. Now feel free to drop into the Learning Centre located on the Townsville or Cairns campus to ask any questions uh, from uh, at the Peer Advice Desk as well as even emailing. You can email a learning advisor or the Learning Centre by emailing learning at jcu.edu.au. It's particularly helpful if you are off campus or studying at a distance. Learning advisors can support you regardless of the mode of study that you are partaking in. So, I hope you'll take away something from this video and I wish you every success this semester with your study.